sunshine. Our temperatures around the immediate metro inside the Capital Beltway will rebound quickly, well into the middle to upper 60s to even close to 70 degrees. Going out to lunch, upper 50s right now, middle 60s by 2 p.m. The drive time home this evening may want to crank open the windows or open up the sunroof. Temperatures upper 60s to around 70, cooling down to the middle 60s by 7 p.m. Now for tonight, we have a cold front that's on the way. Low temperatures range from the middle 30s to the middle 40s, depending on your location, and could be looking at areas of rain changing over to a little bit of snow by early tomorrow morning and through the mid morning hours. Now, not looking at any major snow accumulations. The sun angle this time of year is really strong. The ground temperatures, the road surface temperatures are well, well above freezing. Waking up tomorrow morning, mid to upper 30s to lower 40s. Here's our future cast for the day tomorrow. I have it starting at 7 o'clock. So if you're getting up early tomorrow, maybe go to the farmer's market, Old Town Alexandria. May see a few flakes of snow falling even across southern Maryland. Moving through the mid morning hours into the afternoon. Notice how things begin to clear up, but notice how it changes over to a little bit of rain. And we can't rule that out moving into southern Maryland come tomorrow afternoon. But for the baseball game tomorrow, not looking at any problems whatsoever. Here's our future cast for potential snow totals. One tenth of an inch possible at Reagan National Airport. Keep in mind, this does not take into account the melting that's going to occur. And if you figure that a tenth of an inch is going to melt, you're not looking at any accumulation whatsoever. Tomorrow's forecast looks like this. It's going to be a cool day. Temperatures in the middle 40s. That's well below average for this time of year. Take you out look at our seven day outlook. Temperatures will be around 50 on Sunday, middle 40s on Monday by Tuesday, upper 50s. And then look what happens toward the end of next week. We start to warm things up a little bit and then we're going to look at temperatures in the middle 60s by Thursday coming up in a few minutes. I'm going to show you Friday and into the following weekend with the cherry blossom parade. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that I'm going to like you it. are not only going to like it, uh -huh. you're going to love it. Uh, look, I am here you're gonna do for like that. This. You're going to heart. I'm going to heart you. You're going to heart it. I already heart you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, <love> Steve. <laughs> well, happening tonight, 2020 is on with a mother's plea to free her son convicted of murder. Mark Fisher, a college football standout, was killed after leaving a party in Brooklyn, New York, back in 2003. Now, two men accused in his death were both sentenced to 25 years to life. ABC's Juju Chang is here with a preview of what to expect tonight. Juju, good to have you here. And I saw a preview of tonight's episode, and this mother's uphill battle is very, very interesting. It's an example of the extraordinary and in some cases audacious lengths one mother was willing to go to to try to prove her son's innocence. At one point she went undercover. She told me in part because the private investigator bills were stacking up. And so she went undercover in order to try to sting a juror that she thought was guilty of misconduct. And I saw that in the interview that you actually were there when her son called her and you were able to talk to him about how he is um, kind of getting through this time of believing his innocence and he's still stuck behind bars. Absolutely. And he's having to prepare for a second trial while behind bars. They refuse to let him free. And he's telling me about uh, a knife fight that happened on his bunk that morning. He's also telling me how he sees his mother as a lifeline because every day he knows that she's fighting for him day in and day out. And one of the things that she did was go undercover and she changed to her parents, dyed her hair platinum blonde, went to a tanning booth, donned short shorts and plunging neckline in order to catch the eye of this juror that she thought was guilty of juror misconduct. And so she wined and dined him over a period of months, put a hidden recording device and recorded all their conversations and tried to get the conviction overturned. Also wanted to ask you about the other man uh, behind bars convicted in this uh, crime. What is the deal with this other person? So Antonio Tweed Russo was also charged with murder. He was, as we say, the trigger man. And after 15 years, he finally confessed to the murder. This is something that is a brand new development that 2020 has learned. And what he told the detectives was that he shot Mark Fisher that night and that the gun was not provided for him by John Juca, which is the reason why John Juca has spent 15 years in prison because he was an accomplice to this murder. So in many ways, much of what the prosecutor has thrown at John Juca in order to keep him behind bars all these years has disintegrated.
Wow. All right, Juju Chang, thank you so much for your time right now. A very interesting story. ABC's uh, 2020 airs tonight at 10 o'clock right here on ABC7. Stay with us. More of ABC7 News at noon is coming up next. The ABC7 News app is brought to you in part by Greenbrook TMS Neuro Health Centers. Spring is in the air and low payments are just the beginning. Shop LustineToyota.com. RAV4, just $189 a month. Camry, now $219 a month. Prius, only $279 a month. 0% financing and no payments for 90 days to qualified buyers. Plus, auto for life, lifetime vehicle coverage included with your purchase. For the best deals, the best service, and the best vehicle coverage just in time for spring, simply point, click, and save. LustineToyota.com. When you're injured in an auto accident, you may have only one opportunity to take back what's been taken away from you. Don't risk your future. Tell the insurance company you mean business. I called the Mike Slocum.